Hey everyone, how's it going? This is my first SMT challenge run in a while. Ever since Soul Hackers 2, I've been kind of burned out with the series, hence why I've been doing more Castlevania videos, but now I think that burnout is finally over and I can finally get back into SMT videos again. And the run I decided to come back with was a sort of return to my first challenge video. Can you beat SMT4 without fusion? This was before I ever thought I was going to be doing challenges on this channel, and it was more of an experimental run I did than anything else that I just decided to make into a video. But in that video, I wasn't really taking the game all that seriously, I wasn't even playing on the highest difficulty like I normally do, so I decided to revisit SMT4 with a new challenge. One that I've already done before for Nocturne, that being a minimum battles challenge. And it's exactly what it sounds like. I am only allowed to do mandatory battles. Some people call that a low-level challenge, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of that term because it's pretty vague, like, there's nothing really that defines what exactly is considered low-level. Minimum battles is better defined with its rules. However, unlike in my Nocturne video where I was playing on the easiest difficulty, here I'm going to be playing on regular difficulty. While I'm not playing on Master Mode, SMT4 is still a decently hard game on normal difficulty, especially in the early game, and that's really what I'm worried about the most. So, with this challenge, I think the rules should be obvious, but let's set them out anyway. I am only allowed to do battles that are required to beat the game. I cannot do any other encounters for any reason. If I do get into a random encounter, the only thing I can do is escape, which is actually another reason I'm not doing Master Difficulty, because in that, it is impossible to escape from random encounters. So yeah, now that that's been established, let's get on with the video. But first, a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Goddess of Victory Nikkei. For those of you that haven't heard of it, Nikkei is a new free-to-play third-person shooter for PC and mobile phones, set in a post-apocalyptic sci-fi world where you can build your army out of beautiful maidens to survive against mechanical enemies called Raptures. It features some gorgeous artwork, both for the characters and the environments, and it can be enjoyed both seriously and casually. And right now, for a limited time, Nikkei is running a collaboration with another series that's post-apocalyptic and has the player fighting against robots. That is the critically acclaimed Nier Automata. And yes, that means Tubi, A2, and Pascal from Nier Automata will be able to join you, and will be playable in this game, and they have some very powerful abilities. Tubi's HP buff skills make her one of the most resilient units in the game, and her Cluster Bomb skill makes her insanely powerful offensively while A2 skills make her a great unit to use against bosses with multiple segments. Whether you're a Nier fan looking to check this game out for this collaboration, or a returning player to Nikkei, or whether you played neither but this game catches your interest, now is a great time to check it out and start your campaign. And you can do that right now by checking out the link down below in the description, where you will receive 23 advanced recruitment vouchers, 10 regular recruitment vouchers, 3 limited SR Pascals, and 2 limited Avatar frames. Crossover Our World, the crossover between Nier and Nikkei. So, as usual, I start the game, go through the awkward dream sequences, get my gauntlet, and then we can start the tutorial. The first battle is always against a Laham Deer and a Slime. There's not much to say since I don't have any skills or anything, I just attack the Slime, get a glowing press turn, then attack the Laham Deer, and I keep doing this until they're both dead. I get my first level up and promptly dump all of my stats into magic because if you've played this game you probably know that it is one of the most unbalanced games in the series when it comes to builds for your protagonist. You can focus entirely on a single offensive stat with absolutely no drawbacks as long as you dump some points into agility every once in a while. So that completes the combat tutorial. Now the next task is to recruit three demons for a full party. And yes, because recruiting demons counts as a battle and because it provides experience, these are going to be not the only demons I can recruit, you'll see that there are some exceptions soon enough, but recruiting is not going to be a big part of this run, so I really need to think about which demons I recruit here. The first demon encountered is always a centaur, which is actually a pretty good demon, and recruiting it usually goes smoothly. I'm not sure if it's programmed to be this way or if I've just been lucky during my 10 years of playing this game, but the next encounter is when you start to learn the true horrors of demon negotiation. I am at two battles right now, and in order to keep this a true minimum battles run, I need to get into an encounter with two demons, and I need to recruit both of them, which is possible, but you have to be extremely lucky. The demons I decide on are Napaya and McCoy. Napaya because she's the only one of these early game demons that learns Dia, and McCoy because he learns Zeo, which will help me in an upcoming boss fight. 
Recruiting them both in one encounter requires a lot of soft resetting, though, because for whatever reason, these demons have two of the most insufferable personalities in the game. It doesn't help that I'm not exactly swimming in resources right now, but after like 15 or so tries, I am able to recruit them, and now I have a full party at just three battles. Once that's done, Hope gives us a quest to retrieve a hidden item from the second level of Naraku, and this is hidden in a chest that's guarded by a disaster horde, and even though it's shown to be an enemy in the world, there's no way around it. This thing is pretty strong, and it's weak against both wind and light, neither of which I have any moves for, so I just have to attack. This battle is pretty much entirely a test of luck and speed, and it does take a good few attempts. Its only move is Dream Fist, which isn't strong, but it does have a chance to put the target to sleep, and because this is SMT, that's pretty much a guarantee when the enemies use it, and it can kill everyone except Centaur in just one shot anyway, so it's basically a situation where he's just picking off my allies one by one while I'm attacking, and hoping I can deal enough damage to him before he wipes out my entire party. Flynn not having any magic attacks at all at this point definitely doesn't help, but at least McCoy and Centaur are doing around 50 damage with their attacks, which is decent. In my successful attempt on the final turn, it comes down to me and a sleeping centaur. I try to pass a turn to see if he'll wake up, which he doesn't, so I just attack instead, and to my surprise, that does enough to finish it off. So we deliver the ring, get another dream sequence, and then we're tasked with completing three challenge quests, two of which require me to battle enemies. One of them requires me to get three griffin talons, which I get from killing griffins. Now, remember what I said a moment ago about there being other demons I could recruit? Well, this is one of them. Griffins are always encountered in pairs, and because I only need three talons, I can recruit the fourth one, which is exactly what I do. The last quest has me fight Orthrus as a mini-boss, and he's kind of difficult, but still easier than the Disaster Horde. Mainly because my Flynn actually has a magic attack now. Yeah, Bufu in fact, which Orthrus is weak to, but it also specializes in fire magic attacks, which Flynn is weak to, so all I can do is hope that he either just does his normal attack, his fire breath misses, or he attacks while Flynn is smirking, and with a lucky enough combination of these factors, I am able to take him down, and that marks seven battles so far. Once I deliver the results and collect my rewards, another samurai informs us that Navarre has been kidnapped, which turns out to be a prank, and now I have another mandatory fight against two Nagas. This is probably the hardest fight so far, because at this point, Flynn's only magic attack is Bufu, which Naga nulls, and I don't have any fire moves, which Naga is weak against. Plus, they have Taru Kajo, which they always go for on the first strike that they are guaranteed to get. If they get a first turn critical hit and or kill one of my allies, well, that's an automatic reset. The same is true if they get a critical hit with Lunge, which is one of those high crit rate, low hit rate attacks, but because the enemies are using it, that low hit rate caveat doesn't really apply. Before this fight, I do fuse my first demon, that being Angel, which I get from fusing Centaur with Napaya, who I immediately bring back from the compendium, but this only makes so much more of a difference. Since I can't use any magic, I just have to use Needle Shot, which all of my demons except for Napaya know, and for not having put a single point into either Strength or Dexterity, Flynn's Needle Shot is doing a surprising amount of damage, but still not as much as I would like. It's pretty much inevitable that I'm going to lose a demon or two in this fight, but when this happens, I can bring out my other ones to help or at least be death fodder. In my successful attempt, I mostly just deal with more of the same stuff. Right before I take out the first Naga, they take out my Centaur, so I summon out my Griffin, whose Bouncy Claw is proving to be extremely helpful, and in the last two turns, the second Naga misses Lunge twice in a row, and then I finish him off with a Needle Shot. With this, my Angel levels up and learns Raku Kaja, which I can also pass on to Flynn, and that is definitely going to be a massive help in the upcoming fights. Like this next one, which is against Wendigo and the Wendigo Horde. This boss is actually pretty easy. It starts with a single Wendigo that is weak against fire, but also weak against electricity, which is a godsend here because I still don't have any fire magic attacks, but my McCoy does know Zeo. As soon as the fight starts, I immediately max out my defense with Rock Kaja so that I can survive most of its attacks, and once I take out the Wendigo, I have to fight the Horde. It's actually not too different from the first Wendigo, only now it has two turn icons instead of one, and it also knows Mabufu, which isn't actually as bad as it sounds because I have maxed out defense. It also knows Poisma, which isn't too bad either, especially because when you fight the Horde, Isabeau joins and she knows Sudumi. 
but on the last turn, my McCoy does run out of MP, so I can't use Zeo, and I fail to finish it off, but Isabeau comes in and saves the day. After that, we go further in and into the Demon's Domain. Here, I'm going to have to fight Alrane, who is also weak against Fire, which I still don't have, but now that I'm level 6, I can fuse Pele, who does learn Aki, although it does require me to part with my Griffin and McCoy, though I think they've served their purpose well. So I go into the Domain and challenge the boss. Once again, I immediately get my defense maxed. The extra turns from Pele do help, but she's the only one with Agi right now, so it doesn't really make or break the fight. But Arane doesn't really have any threatening attacks either. The only one that's kind of a problem is her Poison Breath, mainly because Centaur is weak against it, meaning she gets press turns and sometimes smirks, but her only damaging attack is Dorn Gift, which, even when she's smirking, doesn't do enough to kill any of my party members in one hit. She pretty much just alternates between Poison Breath, Dorn Gift, and her normal attack throughout the fight. I alternate between healing and attacking with whatever I can, and we easily beat her on our first attempt. So Navarre has his whole breakdown, we do the hardest quest in the game, meeting Jonathan and Walter at the lake, and later that night we see that there's some chaos going on at the Kichijorji Forest. Turns out the villagers are being turned into demons by reading... literature. Those must be some seriously screwed up books for them to be turning them into demons. Now, I don't know if this is a good thing or not, but there are a few mandatory battles here. Four to be exact, not counting the last boss. You see those red enemy models in the area? Yeah, those things are required battles and there's no way around them. You can't lure them out because they don't come after you, and you can't sneak around them, so you have no choice but to fight. They're not hard though, we're starting to get to a point in the run where we're no longer just barely scraping by and are actually able to stand a decent chance. Because while we are underleveled, we have more resources available to us that we can use to beat the enemies. Issachar isn't much harder than the enemies we fought earlier, but he does get a few lucky hits toward the end of the first attempt and it kills both my Pele and my Angel, so I just reset and do the fight again, and on the second attempt it's a complete joke. So the Black Samurai, who gave everyone the literature, gets away, and Abbot Hugo tasks us with finding her. Now, you all know what's coming up next, the infamous fight against the Minotaur, and there is not a single mandatory battle until then. And, don't get me wrong, the fight against the Minotaur is going to be difficult, but I think the hardest challenge here is making it through Naraku without getting into a single encounter. Because, yeah, while technically SMT4 has no random encounters, the enemies pop up and come at you in ways that you pretty much can't avoid, so it just it might as well have them. Escaping is the only option, but because we're not on fellow difficulty, the chances of escape aren't too favorable. Usually it's around 50%, but because this is SMT, 50% usually means more like 10%. After about an hour of trying and failing to escape, soft resetting, getting beat up, and dying, I finally make it to the Minotaur's Hall without engaging in a single battle. And now, it is time. Most of you should know that the Minotaur is weak against ice, and thankfully Flynn has Bufu. Not only does he have Bufu, but it's actually at plus two, which is definitely helpful. And in fact, everyone in my party except Pele knows Bufu. As usual, I immediately max out my defense as soon as I can, but even at max defense, there's a pretty good chance he'll be able to kill one or more of my party members in a single turn. This is mainly due to his Labyrinth Strike skill, which deals mega physical damage to random targets. So, I just have to cross my fingers and hope that he doesn't land too many hits when he goes for this. He also knows Warcry, which lowers both my attack and defense. I mean, I can easily just buff my defense back up, but there's nothing I can do about the attack drop, unfortunately. The first attempt actually goes pretty well. I get really lucky with his Labyrinth Strike, and I'm able to do some really good damage to him every turn, and even get him in the red. But then I guess the game decides that the break it's been giving me is now over, and he kills Pele, then lands an Oni Kagura, a low accuracy move, after the dialogue option that decreases his aim, mind you, killing Flynn, then kills my Centaur with another one that crits, then takes out my Napayo with a Laver Strike. After this, I do fuse Stanka because he's one of the few demons I can actually create right now, and Centaur is starting to fall behind in terms of usefulness compared to my other demons, but I do have enough money to rebuy him from the Compendium, which I do just in case. But even with Stanka, it's just a bunch of short, failed attempts where he kills Flynn and or the rest of my party early on, forcing me to reset. Flynn pretty much needs to be alive at the end of every battle because I need him to gain that experience but he's also the most important asset to my team with his high magic stat. In my successful attempt, all that really happens is that I just get lucky with his attacks. 
I do get a few unlucky misses, but I also get a few lucky dodges as well as a few lucky smirks. Pele gets taken out pretty early on, but to replace her, I just bring back out my Centaur. And with him, I have a full team of Bufu users. And with that, I just keep up the pressure until he gets taken out. That brings me almost up to level 10 and mandatory battle number 16. I discover the Sky Terminal, named the Mikado Terminal Perverse because Isbo told me not to, haha ha, funny. And then we get to Medusa, who is, in my opinion, actually harder than the Minotaur, but we'll see how things go here. Which is... Not well. I just get vaporized, mainly because she specializes in gun and electric attacks, both of which Stonka is weak to, something I probably should have thought about before wasting resources fusing him. Well, I'm gonna need to make some adjustments to my party, but in order to do that, I need to buy some demons from the compendium for fusion. But because I need money to do that, my only option to make money is to sell stuff. I mean, it's not like I can grind for it. I rebuy Griffin and fuse him with Stonka to make Earthis. Earthis absorbs electricity, so whenever Medusa uses an electric move on him, her turn will immediately end. I attempt her again, and this proves to be the ticket. Everyone on my team except Pele knows Zahn, and because SMT AI will be SMT AI, Medusa keeps going for Zeonga on Earthis, but I also get pretty lucky with smirking which causes her to miss, and I am easily able to beat her on my second attempt with the only casualty being Angel. So now, at just level 10, we are in Tokyo with only 17 battles behind us. Now, before we can move on, we have to get Pele's head from behind Ueno Station, and yeah, this is another one of those battles that's actually two battles. We have to fight a Morio Horde before fighting the actual boss, and Morio Horde is actually a lot harder than the boss because these things have no weakness. They also know Mudo, and they seem to have some kind of grudge against Flynn because they almost always target him with it. And, like I said, I need Flynn to be alive, not only for the EXP, but also for the upcoming boss. So whenever he gets taken out, all I can do is reset, and keep soft resetting until I get lucky enough to beat them without any casualties. I don't have any multi-target skills on me right now, and I also don't have any demons with Tetraja or any Tetraja stones either, so all I can do is just cross my fingers and keep trying. In my successful attempt, they target Earthis with Mudo, which is great because he nulls it. And in their second turn, they miss the Spirit Drain. And I am able to finish them off and make it to Pele, and he is a complete joke. He is weak against Fire, which both Flynn and Pele have. Plus, I don't have to worry about setting up Rakukajas because I already did that when I was fighting the Morios. On his first turn, he goes for Dekaja and then Palinpa on Jonathan, which misses. And then he doesn't even get a chance to move after that because I finish him off on the next turn. So we get the head taken to the Kelpies who take us across to the next area, where we have a mandatory fight against a Tsuchigumo, who is a complete joke and goes down in one attempt with no effort. I get the Black Demonica armor, which is pretty good, especially since armor is something I've been completely neglecting up until now, and after that I just start wandering around like an idiot until I get to Shinjuku Station and meet Hikaru. Now, here the area where I need to go is blocked off by the Ashurakai. They need someone to help them with the corpse disposal quest before I can move on. Yeah, even though this is technically a challenge quest, we still need to do it in order to move on. And this quest requires us to defeat seven corpses, so that's seven mandatory battles to add to the list. And they provide a lot of experience. I get a level up after almost every single one, and in fact, not only do I level up, but my angel evolves into Archangel because in this game you can cycle through pretty much the entire divine race by starting with Angel, which for a challenge like this is perfect. And I also fuse Saparna because with him I get the Spirit Drain skill, which will allow Flynn to farm unlimited MP during battle once he gets it. The corpses are all extremely easy, but at the end I have to fight this guy who's a little late to the party. And this fight is a complete joke. In fact, I actually think it's easier than the corpses. He doesn't get a single chance to move. I don't know if this is because all the experience I gained from the corpses helped me catch up, but there's still a pretty wide gap between his level and mine. Plus, with Archangel in my party, I now have Taru Kaja, but still, beating him in one turn? Well, that marks battle number 27. So now I can go through the previously blocked off area to get to the government office plaza, where I have to awkwardly avoid all the demons some more, although at this point I actually discover a trick to getting around them. Right before a demon is about to make contact, I save the game, then immediately load the file that I just saved. 
because every time a save file is loaded, it resets the positions of all the enemies on screen, and they won't spawn for a certain distance. I mean, yeah, it takes time and it's tedious, but it's still a faster and more reliable process than getting into battle and trying to escape. Now, at the area with the boss, we have a choice. We can either fight Kuebiko or refuse to fight him and fight a Harpy Horde instead. It's debatable which one is easier, but I opt to fight Kuebiko because I'm pretty sure I get more experience that way. Plus, I also get 4,000 Mako, which I am for sure going to need. You guys should know the drill by now. Strike the weaknesses for extra turns, set up my defenses, then focus on healing and strengthening my offenses. Not only do I have three fire attackers, but one of them knows Augie Lau, and yeah, Kuebiko doesn't really have much in the way of skills. He knows Rakunda, which is actually a good thing because he needs to waste a turn using it, and whenever he does, I can just rebuff through Rakukaja. And his only attacks are Wind Breath, one of the worst skills in the game, and Axel Claw, which only hits once and hardly does anything after my defensive buffs. So, yeah, it only takes a few turns to kill him with fire. So from him, I get the Jirai Talisman, and I can give this to the Ring of Gaia guys and Ikebukuro to get rid of that flaming wall. And from here, we can go into the Demon's Domain, and this is where we reach a major roadblock. You're probably thinking, that's Shi Wang Mu, right? No, it's the King Yu Guai. That stupid cloud-riding cow is the thing preventing me from moving on. He has no weaknesses, and only two moves, but both of them are high crit rate with low accuracy, but if you were paying attention earlier, you'd know that because this is SMT, those moves are pretty much guaranteed to hit anyway. And they only need to hit and crit once to be a problem, because they're strong enough to kill pretty much all of my allies in one hit. And when they do land a crit, there's also a good chance they'll smirk, which basically means game over. I try again and again, but nothing works. All it takes is one good hit for the entire fight to be over, and without any exploitable weaknesses, there's no way I could beat him before he beats me. For the first time, I give up. Not on the challenge, but it's clear to me that my party won't be able to handle this boss as it stands. What I need are some evasion buffs, but there aren't any demons I have easy access to that have any. My only option is to create one and fuse it into something else that will actually stand a chance against this boss. So I walk around, gather some more relics, and sell a bunch of my stuff, and after a whole bunch of screwing around with fusion, I fuse a Fortuna, who innately gets Sukukaja, and then I fuse her into Daphne, who inherits not only Sukukaja, but also Tarukaja and Rakukaja, and will learn Resist Fizz once she levels up. So after all that effort, does this work? Well, it doesn't make it easy, but it makes it possible. Though, because this is SMT, there are still a lot of times where it hits and crits and kills and smirks and kills again, despite me being at plus three evasion. So it does take a few more attempts, but after getting really lucky, I do beat him. To think that an insignificant mini-boss would be such a problem. Well, now we have to move on to Shi Wang Mu, who I am not looking forward to facing. Now, you all know what to do for this fight. For the first couple of hits, she'll barely take any damage, but after eating everyone up from the Ring of Gaia, she'll be weakened and start taking more damage. The most important thing about this boss is that this first turn is basically a free turn to set up, which, trust me, you're going to need. The cutscene won't be triggered until after you hit her at least three times, so you have until then to set up whatever buffs and debuffs you can. Now, Shi Wang Mu is weak against wind. Elements aren't really much of a factor anymore though, since Flynn has all of them, but it's still worth pointing out. She also has some decent moves, those being Zeodyne, Masionga, Queen's Feast, and Megaton Press, the same move that that cow kept killing me with, but her worst move is Orchard Guardian, which is basically Luster Candy. This is a huge problem, because while I can easily raise my own stats, I can't lower hers. The only stat of hers I can lower is Defense, because I only have Rakunda. Even though this isn't really meant to be a kill or be killed boss, I kinda have to treat it that way, because really the only option here is to beat her before she has a chance to set up too many Orchard Guardians. At least that's what I thought, after wiping out everyone on my team except Flynn and Archangel with a Mazionga. Instead of soft resetting, I decide to stay in and summon Earthis, who is super underleveled, but he does know Zahn, and he also absorbs electricity. Immediately after this, Shi Wang Mu takes out Archangel, leaving just me and Earthis, and he's doing a surprisingly good job of taking Shi Wang Mu's hits but his Zahn is also helping me keep up the pressure with extra turns. But most importantly, whenever Shi Wang Mu goes for Mazionga, he literally eats it up and it immediately ends her turn. Shi Wang Mu gets close to taking out Flynn several times, but doesn't actually succeed in doing so. 
Once she's in the red, I actually take a big risk by not healing Flynn when he's at about half health, but he survives with just 2 HP. I heal then the next turn just to be safe, but after that, I'm easily able to finish her off. Well, it does kind of suck that none of my demons gained any EXP, but that's one of the bosses that historically has given me the most trouble, so I'll take my victory and run. And by that, I mean reset the game and attempt her again because I actually kind of want my Daphne to gain that EXP so she'll learn Resist Fizz, which I'll definitely need. This time, I start with Earthis on my team, and this boss is a total cakewalk. After that, there's only one other mandatory fight before confronting the Black Samurai. It's the Lilim Horde, which is super easy, and then the Black Samurai puts up no fight, and we bring her back to Mikado to be executed. After that, Gabby tasks us with going to the Kagome Tower to rescue three VIPs. Now, this is something that wasn't really much of an issue up until now, but I'm not going to be able to use any of the terminals in Tokyo. You know why? Because in order to activate the terminals, you have to fight bosses. Bosses that are not mandatory. So yeah, that means every time I want to go anywhere in Tokyo or go back to the Kingdom of Mikado, I have to go on foot. The only terminals I can use are the Sky Terminal and the Perverse Terminal, so at least I don't have to trek through Naruku every single time. So I get to the Kagome Tower, but before I can enter, I have to fight Balor, who has no weakness and knows Megaton Press. Yeah, this takes a few attempts. Not much to say, just the same deal as the King Yugui fight. Just keep buffing and trying again until you're lucky enough to beat him. Now inside the Kagome Tower, there are three mandatory bosses. The first one is against Murmur, who goes down in a couple of turns. The second one is against Grimmery, who goes down in one turn. And at the top, there's Asmodeus, but before I can get to him, there's a spot with one of those binding traps. And as soon as the trap activates, enemies spawn and ambush me. And no, there's no way around this. You can't bring up the pause menu when in one of these traps, so the saving trick doesn't work. And you can't even swing your sword. You literally have no choice but to get ambushed by one of these enemies and then rely on the minuscule odds of escape you have. Not to mention, if you're ambushed by the Drake Horde, you can't even escape at all. Against most hordes, your chance of escape is zero. So I try again and again until I am finally able to escape and challenge Asmodeus, who is pretty easy. He has a huge move pool, but isn't very strong, and he has a very exploitable weakness to win. I also try the Hama Cheese Trick, which, if you haven't seen my other video, Asmodeus is the only boss in the game who is susceptible to Hama, which is an instant death skill, but Principality runs out of MP and then dies before it lands, so I just finish him off normally. After this, my Strix learns Tarunda, which of course I pass on to Flynn, because the wider the level and stat gap gets, the less I'll be able to rely on Rakukaja alone. I'm going to need to raise my defense and also keep the enemy's attack down too. But anyway, we bring everyone back to Mikado, and of course we're not automatically taken there by the game, but then again, since we don't have access to any of the terminals, Jonathan, Walter, and Isabeau probably had to walk all the way there too, while carrying these guys, so it was probably worse for them. But anyway, we are now at 35 battles, and we're informed that some guy named Tayamo wants to speak with us. Turns out he's holding one of our fellows hostage and wants us to take out a demon for him. That demon is Kogasaburo. I've never really had that much of an issue with this demon before, but this is the first boss in quite a while that's given me trouble. Part of this is because he's one of those bosses that can get the first attack. In fact, I'm not sure if it's a guarantee or not, but it happens in every single one of my attempts. And in almost every one of these attempts, he takes out one or more of my party members. So all I can do is keep soft resetting until I get a turn where he doesn't. He also knows Sukukaja, which he likes to use nearly every turn, so before I can even attempt to hit him, I have to get my hit and evasion rate up too. But before I can do that, I need to get his attack down and my defenses up so that I can actually survive his attacks. So, yeah, a lot of setting up for this fight, but once that's been covered, it's not too bad. It still takes a good amount of attempts due to the aforementioned first turn clause and the occasional smirk javelin rain, which is able to decimate my party even at max defense and minimum attack. But at least he doesn't have a lot of HP, so with a bit of luck, I am able to take him out. We then meet Tayama, and he tells us to kill Yuriko, the leader of the Ring of Gaia. But before we can get to them, we have another mandatory fight against the guard, who is pretty easy. He fights alongside two Momonofus, nothing really difficult here. So once you get to their headquarters, you have to pass their initiation ritual. You have to carry this candle to the end without it going out. It basically acts as a party member that the enemies can attack, and if it runs out of HP, you fail. But it has a ton of HP, so... Yeah, I've never even came close to having this candle going out, but 
there are a few mandatory battles against red enemies here. They're a little more than slightly tougher than average versions of the enemies you normally encounter here. And like the ones in the forest, they can't be skipped, except for one. But something crazy happens in one of these encounters. Normally, these demons can't be spoken to or recruited, but apparently they can still beg for a ceasefire. This happens with an Osei, who I obviously can't recruit because I'm not high enough level, but when this happens, they'll find another demon to join you. And the one I get is... Narcissus, which isn't bad, but I just found that really interesting that apparently during some of the mandatory encounters in this game, demons can still be negotiated with if you get them to beg for their lives. But yeah, there's a total of seven mandatory encounters like this here, plus Taraka as a boss at the end, which isn't any harder than any of the normal encounters, but yeah, this brings the battle count up to 45. So they figure out that we were sent by Tayama. I mean, we did kinda tell them that we were there to kill Yuriko, so now we gotta do her personality test, and at the end she reveals herself as Lilith. And then she tells us to check out what the Ashurakai are doing at Midtown before deciding we want to kill her. So we do, but not before stopping at Florida Cafe first, but once we get to Midtown we have to fight Tenkai. Tenkai is not one of the hardest, but he's also a very patience-trying boss, mainly because he resists everything in the game. So if you want to hit him for full damage, you have to use Almighty Attacks, which I don't have. Not unless you count Spirit Drain, which doesn't even deal damage. So yeah, it takes a couple of attempts, mainly because he gets a few lucky crits with his normal attacks and kills my party members. That itself isn't grounds for a reset, but Tenkai does provide a lot of experience, so I want to make sure my demons get as much as they can. Especially Power, since he learns Megiddo, which would have made this fight a lot easier. But yeah, not much to say. Not a hard boss, but definitely a tough one. But yeah, after that there aren't any mandatory battles for the rest of this dungeon. When you do get to the Reverse Hills, there is one against some demons, which is pretty easy, and I don't even think it's worth talking about or even showing. And then at the end, you get knocked out by Yaso Magatsuhi. So we go back to the kingdom to tell everyone what happened, and Sister Gabby shows us the people we rescued. The Archangels, plus her, who is also an Archangel. And from here, Walter and Jonathan disagree about what to do next. You can side with Walter and take on Taima, or side with Jonathan and take on Lilith. We are going to side with Jonathan, because this path has fewer battles. So we head on down to Tsukiji Honganji, and before Lilith, there are two mini-bosses we have to fight. The first one is a Girmakala, and the second one is against a Dakini. Both pretty insignificant, but that is a completely different story for Lilith. Lilith resists everything except for guns, so it's kind of a similar deal to Tenkai, only now I actually do have an almighty attack and a weakness that some of my demons can exploit. But she also has much better moves, including Luster Candy and Silent Prayer, which resets everyone's stats. And I'm not sure how her AI works with this, but from my experience, if a single one of your stats goes above one or a single one of hers goes below one, she will use this. So buffing is pretty much a lost cause. Except it's not because you still need to buff to survive and so that she wastes a turn going for Silent Prayer. Her main damaging attacks, though, are Megiddo and Maziodyne, with Maziodyne being the most devastating. For the first couple of attempts, she zaps me and my party into oblivion. This is the exact same thing that happened in the fight against Medusa. I won't be able to do this with my current party. I need a demon that blocks electricity. So who better than Medusa herself? Not only does she drain electricity, but she also comes with stun needles. A decent gun attack, though she is a special fusion, so I kinda have to go out of my way to fuse her but it turns out to be more than worth it, as it makes what was previously one of the hardest fights into one of the easiest. Her AI can't seem to figure out that going for Maziodyne when one of the party members drains it isn't a good idea, but she also doesn't seem to go for Silent Prayer as much. Power's Tathlum Shot and Medusa's Stun Needles are proving to be excellent damage dealing and press turn flashing skills, while Flint's Megado is also dealing solid damage with each hit. Bridget is easily able to heal off any damage with Meteorama, which at this point is almost enough to heal my entire party back to full HP. Toward the end of the fight, Bridget does go down, but before finishing it, I pull out Incubus so that he gains the experience instead. And after that, Power finishes her off with a tackle shot. So we get a metric ton of experience from the boss, then a metric ton of experience from the Kill the Black Samurai quest, and then another metric ton of experience from the Kill Yuriko quest, which gives me two evolutions. Power evolves into Virtue, and Inferno, who evolved from my Morio, evolves into Porwit. 
There's nothing left for us to do here, so we head on over to Camp Ichigaya and get into the basement where Walter activates the reactor, which sucks us in and takes us to Blasted Tokyo. In order to get out, we need the Yamato remote, and Akira offers to give it to us if we get rid of Pluto the Tormentor. So we head on over to Pluto's castle to do just that. There are a few mandatory fights before we get to the main boss, though. The first is against a horde of Pluto soldiers, the second is against three Pluto warriors, and the third is against three Pluto giants. Pluto, though, is not a completely different but somewhat different beast. He's weak against ice and only has two attacks, Sunny Ray and Volnera. I've never had any difficulty with him before. In fact, my first attempt goes great. He just spams Sunny Ray, which my poor wit absorbs, and I have plenty of time to set up my buffs. However, later on, my attacks start to randomly miss. I mean, I have kind of been neglecting my agility stat in favor of magic, but that hasn't really been much of a problem up until now. And also, here is when I start to notice that the level gap is really starting to widen. I am at level 39 while he is at level 59. Things start to take a turn for the worse, though, when he starts going for Vulnera, which has a very high probability to bind, meaning I can't do anything meaning I die. It's another kill or be killed fight, which shouldn't be too difficult. I mean, I'm doing a lot of damage, but how can I kill him when my attacks keep randomly missing? It doesn't even make sense. This thing is a poison generating machine that's just standing in one place. How am I missing so much? So yeah, it does take a couple of tries before I get lucky enough to actually hit him, but when I do, he's not hard. Just hit him as hard as you can, and before long, he will go down. Oh, and get this. After the fight, my Sedna learns Deadly Wind, a severe magic skill, which you bet I'm going to pass on to Flynn as soon as I can. I didn't think I'd be getting any severe magic skills this run. This is pretty awesome. So that's it for Blasted Tokyo, but now we move on to Infernal Tokyo. The Akira here tells us that we're going to help him take out King Kenji. And I just want to say, F this overworld. Somehow the layout is even more confusing than regular Tokyo, and the enemies are much more numerous and aggressive. And with how big the level gap is right now, Escaping an encounter is pretty much impossible. After wandering around aimlessly for like an hour, I finally find Shinjuku and have to fight the Vitala guarding the gate, who is incredibly easy, and it gives my party enough experience for my Incubus to finally evolve into Succubus, a personal favorite demon of mine, but she's important here because she learns Energy Drain. Before I can move on, I have one more mandatory battle against Mahama Yuri. Actually, first I have to fight a horde of Yaksa who are weak against wind, a great new target for my severe damaging deadly wind skill, and after them I have to fight the actual boss. He's not too bad really, I mean he knows Zondine, which both Flynn and Clotho are weak against, but with boosted defense it doesn't do anywhere near enough to kill. Plus, I mean, look at how much damage I'm doing with a Zionga. I mean, look at this, I'm not even using Concentrate. So, yeah, another easy boss. Only one boss left. I go to Camp Ichigaya, a bird pukes on my hands, then a giant foot pukes on my hands, and then they let me go see Kenji. So, Kenji is kind of a weird boss. I'm not exactly sure how his AI is supposed to work, but depending on how lucky you get, he'll either be one of the easiest or one of the hardest bosses in the game. First of all, he has two weaknesses, one to fire and the other to win. But unlike every other enemy, striking one of his weaknesses actually deals less damage than striking him normally. You still get the press turn, so I still recommend it, but whether or not this is the ideal strategy is debatable. Now, I say this boss is so polarizing in difficulty because of one skill, Ancient Curse. This afflicts you with every ailment in the game. You think you're doing great for most of the fight, but then he uses this, and there's nothing you can do other than watch your party members flash different colors before taking damage. You basically lost the fight. And yes, he does spam this, so don't even think about waiting for it to wear off. Though, I've done attempts at this fight where he doesn't go for it a single time. My first attempt, he doesn't, but that's because he kills everyone with Hades Blast first. Once again, I'm gonna have to rethink my strategy. And thankfully, there is a demon that can help me deal with his physical attacks. Nebiros. Nebiros is the only demon whose level I'm higher than who nulls physical attacks. But there's also another demon that will help me out. That one is Dionysus. Dionysus is not only immune to the effects of his ancient curse, but he also comes with the skill Doping, which increases everyone's max HP. And he has Tetracarn, which he got from Dontalian, one of the demons I used to help fuse him. So with this new team, I attempt the fight again, and it goes excellently. 
I immediately dope up at the start, increasing my max HP. Then I set up a Tadraja with Virtue to block his Mamu Dune, and then I start buffing up my defenses. Once I'm set up, I just attack and watch as he attacks in vain while losing his press turns. Conqueror's Spirit and Hades Blast are blocked by Nebiros, Mamu Dune gets blocked by Tedraja, and every now and then I use a Tetrakarn just to be safe. And watching his attacks get reflected at him this way is hilarious. The only attack that's still a problem is Ancient Curse, but like I said, Dionysus is completely immune to it. So when he goes for it, not only is he unaffected, but Kenji loses his press turns. It's still kind of a problem because my other ally still can't do anything after he uses it, but because Dionysus is also my healer, I can use him to keep them alive until they get a chance to attack. That's kind of what you have to do once he starts going for Ancient Curse. Just stall until your party members get a chance to move. That's what I do, and with a lot of skill and patience, and just as I run out of MP, I am able to take out King Kenji. And that is the end of Infernal Tokyo, and we are currently at 57 battles. Now, this is the last point before the alignment lock, though at this point there's nothing you can do here to influence your alignment, so if you can't get the ending you wanted, you are screwed. I wanted to wait until this point to say this, but as for my alignment, I've been trying to go slightly neutral, but also slightly more towards chaos. Originally, I was planning to go law because that route does have fewer required battles than chaos, but I already did that in my no fusion run, and I don't want to go white because I still want to get an ending. And I definitely don't want to go neutral because that requires me to do a bunch of challenge quests and to this day information about which ones you need to do to get this ending is still pretty vague. So that leaves me with only chaos. But I still wanted to lean more toward neutral just to see if I could get it without staring at a guide the whole time. So let's see what happens. And what do you know? I do get the neutral ending. 10 years of playing this game and I am finally able to get the neutral ending without staring at a guide. Not bad, but this isn't the ending we'll be doing. So I reset and make the other choice, and there is Walter, and also Hikaru, who is actually Lucifer, and also voiced by Laura Bailey. Now, before I can move on, I have to fight against the White, and there are four of them, and they mostly play the same. The first one is Abbot Hugo, who is the most unique of them all, mainly because he mostly uses magic attacks. He's not hard, but he is very luck-based because of his almighty skill, Not Wave, which has a 10% chance to insta-kill and there's nothing that can be done to block it. So just cross your fingers and hope that that effect doesn't happen, but SMT will be SMT, so of course it will. The next three focus more on physical attacks. Normally this would be a problem, but after the fight against White Hugo, I randomly decided to pass Tetracarn on to Flynn. I wasn't planning on this, and honestly, I don't even like using these skills because they're kinda cheap, but for a challenge run, I'll make an exception. And boy am I glad I did, because with the amount of physical skills these guys like to use, it makes what might have been some of the hardest bosses in the game some of the easiest. Just setting this up and watching them idiotically repeatedly attack themselves never gets old. The only one that really puts up a challenge is White Issachar, because he has both magic and physical skills, plus Luster Candy, although his AI doesn't seem to understand that using physical attacks after the enemy uses Tetracarn isn't a good idea. But he does have Not Wave, which is great. Once I beat him, that brings me up to 61 battles. Once we're back, Hikaru performs her whole ritual on Walter to turn into an alien in a Matador costume. And on the way out of Camp Ichigaya, we're stopped by Izabo, who we have to fight. Now, this fight is not hard at all. For one thing, I now have Concentrate, which I learned from Naja, who I've been keeping in my comp for a reason you're about to find out. But the fight pretty much goes like this. First turn, Isabeau summons her demons. Flynn immediately concentrates, the rest of my party buffs up, Isabeau heals and removes her party's debuffs, my party buffs up some more, Flynn uses Megidola, which doesn't kill all of her demons, okay, I was not expecting that, but I do take them out on the next turn, and after that it's just, yeah, there's nothing she can do, just finish her off. Now, after that, I'm finally able to leave Camp Ichigaya and go somewhere where I can sell my stuff and get some money to create the necessary demons to fuse Alice. Alice is another demon that is immune to all ailments. Only unlike Ouroboros, she's naturally immune to them. She doesn't need either of the Null skills. It's one of the reasons you see her as a staple in so many playthroughs, and this is going to be my final team for the remainder of the game. Ouroboros, Alice, and Aravada, and they're all playing supportive roles. At this point, all the attacking is going to be done by Flynn. 
So we go up the tower, go through Naraku, and get to the wall that is blocking the path to the Eastern Kingdom of Mikado. And in order to destroy it, we have to go through Purgatorium. Now, if we were doing the Law route, there would only be two bosses to fight in the final dungeon, but because we're doing Chaos, there are six. Most of them are pretty easy though, a few hordes, a few boss battles against heralds like Aniel, Kazviel, and Azriel. Really, the only one I think worth talking about is Seraph, because unlike most other bosses in the game, this one actually has a special gimmick. Every turn, he'll create a barrier around himself that will reflect all attacks except for one element. Which element this is, is the element of the color of the shield he surrounds himself with. Blue for ice, red for fire, yellow for electricity, you get the idea. It may catch you off guard on your first attempt, but once you have this part figured out, it's pretty easy. And hitting him with a single attack breaks his entire barrier, so after that you can do whatever you want. He's not strong, he doesn't have much in the way of attacks, his only threatening move is Megidolon, and yeah, overall a pretty easy boss. So that's all the mandatory bosses of Purgatorium. Now it is time to take on the final boss of the Chaos Route, Merkaba. Now, SMT4 is infamous for having notoriously easy final bosses compared to the rest of the series, but Merkaba is a lot harder than I remember him. He's definitely harder than Lucifer, that's for sure. While Merkaba is technically at level 99, making this the biggest level gap in the entire game, his stats don't reflect that. His stats are more like a high 70s, low 80s level demon, but he still has a pretty devastating moveset. His signature move, Chariot, he spams pretty much every turn, sometimes more than once. It's not a strong attack, but it does lower my hit and evasion rate with every hit. Normally, I could easily counter this with Luster Candy, but um, I don't have any demons with Luster Candy. The only demon I have access to at this point that learns it is Jean d'Arc, who is a famed, and those things can only be gotten through fusion accidents. I do have Debilitate, but he can easily counter this with Luster Candy. So really, the only challenge is just trying to keep your agility stat above his while healing and attacking and hoping your attacks hit. It doesn't sound too bad on paper, but there's nothing more frustrating than preparing for a powerful attack only for it to miss. In my first attempt, I actually do get to his second phase, but I don't last long because he kills Flynn with a Lucky Shall Not Resist, an almighty attack that deals mega damage to two random targets and debuffs defense. So I try again, and the first phase goes about the same. It just doesn't last as long because I play more aggressively. Now his second phase is statistically identical to his first one. The only differences are that he can now use Shall Not Resist and Hexagram. Hexagram is an almighty attack that is guaranteed to kill the target, so while it's definitely not a skill I want to get hit by, he doesn't actually go for it very often. I'd actually say the second phase is easier than the first one because now his favorite move is Shall Not Resist. Having my defense debuffed is a much better alternative than having my agility debuffed because this means I can still actually hit him. But he also seems to go for Thunder Rain a lot more often too which is absorbed by Ouroboros. He does still go for Chariot every now and then, and he also goes for Hexagram a couple of times. Not on Flynn, thankfully, and because I have a few Summon Stones, I can easily bring my allies back when they die. And much like the first phase, this phase doesn't take long to beat because of the sheer amount of damage I'm doing. With a few concentrated deadly wins, he goes down. Is there no end to your act? And then we get the ending. Flynn unleashes a bunch of demons against the people of Mikado. Yay. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It is possible to beat SMT4 while doing only mandatory battles. And the number of battles you need to do is 57 for the white ending, 65 for the law ending, and 69 for the chaos ending. Nice. As usual, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, all that good stuff. And until the next video, I will see you guys later.